Welcome back, Goofy Goobers, to Sponge Lore. My name is Eric, and today we are beginning our analysis of the character SpongeBob SquarePants. Before we get into the actual character, let's look at a few logistics. SpongeBob is voiced by Tom Kenny and first appears in the series pilot Help Wanted. He is a male sea sponge. He is mostly yellow with holes that appear darker, almost looking green. He has blue eyes and yellow hair. Our sponge stands at 4 inches tall and weighs 1 ounce. And now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the kid, the goofball, the goofy goober. A first impression is a peculiar thing. Sometimes they are spot on to who you are, but other times you are having a bad day, or you're really tired, or otherwise impaired. However, regardless of whether this impression is an accurate depiction of your true character or not, it makes all the difference. This is where we will start with Spongebob, his first impressions. His first impression with us, the audience, is in the pilot episode, Help Wanted. The first look we get on him is his bedroom. We can see that he sleeps in a bed with his two pets nearby, which seems pretty normal. But then, we haven't gotten to his other choices of furniture yet. His alarm clock is a foghorn, and he keeps a diving board right next to his bed. When thought about on any level, both of these selections seem rather childish. But furniture isn't everything, so let's look at what he actually does. The first thing he does while getting ready for the day is jump out of bed, climb up the diving board, and jump off while exclaiming, Look at me, I'm naked. This is without question an obvious sign of immaturity. Let's look at some of his other first impressions. His first impression at the Krusty Krab was overtly slapstick. With Sandy, he basically showed that he was goofy and liked fighting. Many of the people in the episode Ripped Pants have their first encounter with Spongebob as he purposefully rips his pants right in front of them. When Plankton first meets him, he just thinks he's an idiot, and in the first Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episode, he comes off as an obsessive fan. There is clearly a pattern here, and I promise we can find more if we go past just the first six episodes. Now, I did mention earlier that first impressions are not always accurate, so we need to investigate further to make sure our findings are valid, right? Well, yeah... But, in this case, let me just save us all some time and say that if you watch almost any episode with Spongebob in it, you will easily and clearly see that these are an accurate reflection of his character. Spongebob is, in a word, a kid. This is one of the main themes in the Spongebob Squarepants movie. In this movie, Spongebob is denied a promotion because Mr. Krabs does not deem him fit for the job due to his childish nature. Spongebob's immaturity is then brought up almost non-stop throughout the rest of the movie. It is clear that Spongebob struggles to prove himself in this case because everyone is saying that he can't do it, and for a time, Spongebob actually accepts that and gives up. This essentially requires lies to overcome until at the end when he learns he accomplished his task almost by accident. At the end of the movie, Spongebob accepts that he is a kid, but he makes it a point to everyone present that his childishness is okay because he still did everything they said he could not do. In the Spongebob Squarepants musical, Bikini Bottom is facing an apocalyptic natural disaster. Spongebob, being hero-minded, sets out to find a way to save the town he loves. He tries his hardest, but the other Bottomites say that he's just a simple sponge and can't do it. In the end, Spongebob proves himself and shows that it's okay to be just a simple sponge. Now, these might appear different the first time you watch them, because the musical uses the term simple sponge instead of kid. However, in reality, they are the same struggle for Spongebob and convey the same essential message. It seems odd that the writers would use a very similar structure and message for two different stories. It would make more sense to create more original scripts to keep longtime fans engaged in the story, right? Well, yes. Unless you are trying to make a point with it. 
Upon further investigation, we can find that there are at least 16 additional episodes that follow this same pattern. This comes out to be more than one per season. This level of repetition is not an accident, nor is it likely a result of poor writing. Repetition is widely used to convey importance. Additionally, with a series running for over 21 years and counting, there are bound to be new fans who have not seen older episodes. The reason this particular story gets told so often in so many different ways is that it is one of the most important stories to the character of Spongebob Squarepants. The writers keep going back to it because they desperately do not want us to forget about it. The more times a message is proven, the more powerful it becomes. And through all of this, Spongebob is made stronger. Being constantly proven against the same test does not necessarily suggest a default of weakness. Rather, this could be looked at to see that Spongebob repeatedly and profoundly testifies against the same trial. But what exactly is the message which he employs through his character? That it's not a bad thing to be just a kid, or just a simple sponge, or just a some other third thing because no amount of surface-level magic or promotion is going to change what's really on the inside. That's going to do it for the first part of Spongebob's character analysis. Make sure to watch out for the next part. Subscribe to be a goofy goober, like and share the video if you enjoyed, and leave a comment saying what you want me to talk about next. Until next time, stay spongy.